Osaka's shooting range. Lights on, ready to go with two more finals today. And both finals are the three position competition, the 50 meter three position competition, the marathon of shooting competitions that turns into a sprint in the final furlong. Well, we love to watch the suspense build up as these eight finalists battle it uh, to be titled the Paralympic champion. We have the defending Paralympic champion in the field. And there's the woman herself, Zhang Kuping, two-time Paralympic champion from the Rio Paralympic Games in 2016 and London back in 2012. It is a uh, very well thought of uh, competition, this one. A lot of skills needed, a lot of ability, a lot of, uh, not a shooting ability, but be being able to sort out the changeovers. We finish in the standing position. It's slightly different to the Olympic shooting three position competition, of course. But we'll talk you through that as well. You can just see the athletes using their final warm-up time. They've gone through qualification already today, so the marathon has already begun for the athletes. But now their final sighting shots. Forty shots is when we start to see what's going on. We've got a lot of shots before then. Several series in the different positions. Sighting time at the moment. Well, you can see eight athletes lined up in front of you. They'll shortly be presented to us and the supporters that are here at the Osaka shooting range. But they've already competed for several hours earlier to get to this stage of the competition. couple of surprises and there some more established athletes Irina Shednik two bronze medals already at these Paralympic Games for the Ukrainian having a brilliant debut performance at the Paralympics some will shine when they get on the big stage and she certainly has and others here it's a very fine field reminder of how this excuse me how this works uh, we start with kneeling, then the prone, then standing. Interesting camera angle there. Looks as though she was shooting towards the ground, but obviously the camera shooting is coming from above. Keep Very an eye close on, up. Yeah, and keep an eye on the recoil. Anything that goes straight back is good. If you see a little bit of a wobble side to side, not so good. And those athletes, well, these rifles have to be within very strict regulations, but then they can be as bespoke as you like. And so little touches you will see. Coaches have done their job. They now wait. And although we say there is a kneeling, a prone, a standing element to this, obviously for some athletes with their impairments, they're not able to compete in certain positions you'll see as we go but uh, one thing is for sure they'll all shoot the same amount of targets and uh, we will see who makes it through to the gold medal and also onto the podium well, speaking of podium we have all three athletes who were on the podium back in Rio so it just shows the quality of this final And this is our lineup from 19 to 46 years of age, a good spread of youth and experience, medalists and those appearing for their first time. Uh, sighting shots are done and dusted. We are getting ready for this competition. We'll start at half past the hour local time. of 
coaching staff, other athletes here to add some atmosphere to it. And the, uh, the long pigtails of Irina Shetnik are uh, certainly visible. She did so well. We'll get to her in a minute. Let's start on shooting position A. This is Zhang Qiuping, a silver in the air rifle standing competition. Two goals in Rio, including the three position title as well. And uh, a couple of goals in London, including the three position. So uh, by anyone's standards, a favorite in this competition. Now, this is the 19-year-old already, a gold in the 10-metre air rifle standing competition from Jaipur. First uh, games, but uh, certainly looked like she is part of the furniture here. Next to her, Lee yun ri Only fifth in the air rifle standing, but the gold in the three positions in Beijing and would very much like to have that title back again. Slovakian, next door in shooting position D, Veronica Valafakova. Three times Paralympic gold medalist, couple in Rio, of course. Natasha Hiltrop, gold in the 10 metre air rifle prone competition, a silver in Rio, but not a medal in this particular discipline. One of our Lung Vilai of Thailand, the woman from Pakret, first Paralympic Games final in her first Paralympic Games. And she very much impressed. And she got that bronze, was bronze both in the air rifle prone and standing competition. Can she add a third here? Anna Norman is our Swedish competitor, a world record in qualification, which is of course is also a Paralympic qualification record as well. to wait now until they are set on their way by the chief range officer and we say it's a marathon and not a sprint and that's absolutely right until you get towards the end when we lose athletes every shot however it starts here where you need to start really well well we talked about those qualification records they are wiped clean it's a clean slate to start this event take their starting positions. Just lining up their sights once more. You can see the safety cords there. Must be kept in in between the series when the positions are changed. These final few minutes being used just to make those final moments to focus and get the mind in the zone for what is very much a mental and physical game. We are underway in this women's three position competition. Of course, a slight uh, allowance is made for these athletes if you are not able to, for example, kneel. Uh, an athlete shooting from a wheelchair or a shooting chair can rest the elbow of their non trigger arm on a stand. And you can see that being done there by Zhang. field, large percentage of this finalist field in a wheelchair. And uh, you, you will expect 
decent scores from, from this. You've got a little bit more stability if you're kneeling like Norman of Sweden is, then obviously you have uh, more contact points on the floor. If you are like Hilltrop and some of those athletes in a wheelchair, not a shooting chair, then you have the stability on the stand and you want to certainly be in the 10 ring and uh, possibly a little bit more. It's the, it's the prone position where you should get the highest scores and then when we get to standing where we make sure there's a little less of the uh, stability, then you'll see more variability. So three series first, uh, five shots, and then we will uh, see how we end up after that. And like I say, it takes a while. It's the longest of the sports, uh, different disciplines here in parachuting. Malanga Villa qualified in eighth position into the final and by the spread on her target she might be the least favoured to make it onto the podium at these early stages good start from Zhang the Korean Lee Yun Ri is uh, in the midfield at the moment Gold in that three positions in Beijing, of course. This is uh, Anna Norman of Sweden. She's in the armed forces. And um, she was talking about, uh, she represented Sweden in able-bodied world championships three times up to 2018. But injured her ankle in a fall when she was uh, on exercise with the Swedish army. Five operations, still not quite right. But she has a little bit more mobility than some of the other athletes, which is why she is in the kneeling position there. And that's how it looks after the first five shots. Shetnik is the athlete at the top. And it is uh, Leung Villai of Thailand at the bottom. And quite a gap between first and eighth. And, uh, well, there's still time. And you will see some of these athletes very much prefer some positions over others. Shetnik, who started really well, didn't she, in that uh, 10 metre prone competition just to fade a little bit towards the end but this is a real test of uh, stability technique of your stamina of your mentality it is the blue ribboned event i think it's fair to say both in olympic and paralympic sport and it's still anyone's medal here well shetnik is certainly consistent across the disciplines, like you say, with a medal in both the prone event and the standing event. She'll take confidence from that, no doubt, and knows that she doesn't really have a weakness. Well, she's a, a wonder kid, isn't she? 21 years of age, speaks five languages. <laughs> we mentioned in the other final, including Latin. So uh, there is brain to go with the athletic ability as well. Vadafakova, we saw in the previous final as well sixth uh, in the prone fourth in the air rifle standing so she's always there or thereabouts isn't she three times paralympic gold medalist 38 years of age and as we'll mention in the men's final a inspiration to others Thai athlete struggling a wee bit at the moment well i'm sure Lorraine Villay is taking inspiration from some of those more experienced athletes. But to make it into a final at her first Paralympic Games, uh, an achievement in itself. Absolutely. And at 30, there's still time, isn't there? Never been on a podium at world or continental level. Got a little glimpse of Ivani Lekara, the 19-year-old from India. This is Zhang next door on shooting position A. Coach will be relaxed because he knows that this Chinese athlete is astonishingly good. Looking for a third consecutive three position title. And this is Norman. Well, this is the woman who could potentially threaten Zhang at the top. And she was involved in the London Olympics as well. Not competing, she was part of the uh, air defence section that helped protect London 
during the games. So uh, you can't say that very often. I've been to the games, but in a different uh, capacity. Still with uh, the army. And you can see the little cushion, as you'll see in the Olympic uh, version of this sport as well, under that back leg, just to keep that comfortable enough. And our second series is done in the kneeling position. As we say, not everybody in that kneeling position. Some using the elbow rest on their chairs. And it's level for everybody. And it's Zhang at the moment who is looking so good. And uh, well, Li Yunri has dropped down just a 41 for her in those five shots. She must have had a rogue shot somewhere because uh, she has dropped down to eighth and the tie athlete up into sixth. We will see this happen because there will be certain disciplines that these athletes are not so keen on. Well, it's surprising to see it happen within the first discipline. Like you say, it's expected maybe when they're changing positions, some athletes will be have a favoured position or just find one that they can get a higher score. But with just the second series and such huge changes in the table, we could be in for a very exciting final. There will be some athletes, as we, uh, we mentioned from their results, getting medals in standing, uh, who, when it gets to the last discipline, may, you may find that they are going to come through the rankings, but you've got to be in a decent enough position to do that. Well, it is about being consistent, building that base, and you can't expect to sprint through to the finish if you are already at such a deficit. Zhang really giving herself the best chance, trying to increase her lead as much as she can. He'll drop busy and looking good in second place, a 50 and a 51 threes. 10.1 just drops her down into third momentarily. 10.2, well, the grouping's good, but it's not quite where she'd want it to be. Lee is, uh, where is she in this leaderboard? Down at the bottom. Well, she'll be wanting to make up for whatever the mistake was. I mean, look at that group, it's incredible. So something must have gone majorly wrong in that second series to see her drop right down to the bottom of the standings. Can she climb it back? That's the question. I just wonder whether one of those, it is not unheard of for athletes to accidentally shoot into other, the next door target. It doesn't happen very often. We saw it in the Olympics, but it is unusual. Pressure though can do strange things. Norman is in seventh. 10-3, it's the grouping's not good, is it? And uh, trying to find her way back into that 10 ring after a couple in the nine. That's why she's struggling at the moment. Well, she comes in as the reigning world champion in this event, so she'll certainly want to finish better than her current seventh position, but it's still very early days. That's better, a 10-5. You can see the recoil looking good as well. So her five targets are done. And a 50.1 for her is a lot better. She was in the 49s before. She's still in seventh place. Zhang still at the top. Hiltrop and Vadovikova uh, trying to keep up with the Chinese athlete. The Kara has uh, dropped down after a 48.4 from her. She was in the 50s, high 50s as well to begin with. So. Not so good from her in that next section. And well, we will see what happens. 15 shots gone. And uh, now we change around. In the Olympic sport, of course, we go to prone. This is uh, not going to happen, obviously, for those athletes in the chairs. Keep an eye, though, on Norman on that far side because she will. Uh, she has an ankle problem, but it, apart from that, she can get into the shooting positions. The prone, of course, if you are lying down, is the most um, stable of the positions, so the highest uh, scoring opportunities. And that's why you're getting a bigger table. Um, the idea is to replicate this for those who are either on a shooting 
chair or a wheelchair. So you have not just one elbow, you have both arms able just to make contact. Because gravity is your enemy in this competition, if truth be told. When you're standing, you're trying to keep yourself as still as possible. And so what we're trying to do here is uh, replicate this in the parachuting uh, arena. And of course, one of the uh, reasons this is known as the blue ribbon sport is because you've got to take all the kit you need with you in that box. Now, in Olympic sport, it's just you. You in the box and uh, you have to have everything. So you have to be a bit of an engineer. When it comes to uh, para sport, then obviously you are allowed someone to help you uh, and to get everything ready. But again, it's on the clock, so you've got to be right, you've got to get it done soon, and you've got to have enough time to get your sighting shots away. Yeah, you don't want to be limited when it comes to that. You'd hope you'd have room for excess luggage for travel, wouldn't you, with this amount of kit? Oh, it's a, it's a nervous moment. These athletes are the most nervous at airports, not because they're, they're worried about flying, it's because they want to make sure their precious rifle gets on and off properly and that it, it well, doesn't get lost in transit. Well, I can tell you, travelling with any type of rifle or pistol does require quite a bit of extra time when it comes to getting to the airport and as soon as you mention that at check-in desk there's a few scared faces and along comes security to hopefully make sure your yeah you're always shunted off to the through. side you certainly are uh, where there is a special place to check it all in but it does take an awful long time and then i have seen athletes that i've been on the same flight looking out the window just, oh, yeah, there comes my stuff, yeah, OK. Oh, I hope they look after it well. It is one of those. And also the the, the uh, suits as well, because if you arrive in, at a, a, an event and your suit doesn't, they are bespoke. They are the, the stiff canvas jackets to help with stability, to help you stay nice and compact. Uh, they are made to measure. They are stitched together with the same sewing machine that you put shoes together with so and, and they're all tested as well you want some stability but not an unfair advantage oh well, yeah it's not exactly the sort of thing you could just borrow from your coach or a friend is it or pop down to the local market and find yourself one well people are happy in this situation where they've had to borrow because it's not turned up and it, it never goes well let's put it like that so uh, very patient these athletes not only to get on and off of aeroplanes but also uh, before competition, equipment control can take a good long time. You have to queue up and wait to have everything tested. Well, you can just see there, we've got a lovely close-up of the rifle with all those 2020 Tokyo stickers on, and that's all the areas of the rifle that have been approved. So they will have to be thoroughly checked in all different dimensions, so the sizes, the weight on the trigger, the length, the, the width, and all of that will then have to be signed off and the rifle's kept in a very secure area once they've finished their warm-ups or their sighting shots in between each of the competitions as well. So, Well, the sighting times is part of the actual time you get. Only around seven minutes. And uh, once it's that time is done, we're back to competition and is it a balancing act you want to make sure everything is right for you but you also want to give yourself enough time to get yourself um, ready and for Norman for example who is in that uh, prone position she will have changed the sights the sights have to change the stock can be adjusted rifle always stays the same but the, the sights because your head position is slightly different it's a little subtler when you are shooting from a chair, if truth be told, but you have to make sure that you are in a comfortable position and ready to go once we are told to stop the sighting shots and get ready again for competition. And another three series of five shots, and then we'll see where we are as we get closer to the excitement of the standing part of this competition, two series and then two athletes leave. The see athletes. This, sorry, I was going to say, to see the, the stability, the extra stability they have from these wide shooting tables, just replicating what uh, the stability kind of that Anna Norman has on that far side, just to make it a, a level playing field. Well, we'll expect to see Anna Norman move up through the field, currently sitting in seventh, but this could be her opportunity to 
close the gap and get closer to the podium position. It's interesting, you know, she was saying that, you know, obviously she, she can't, it's very numb, the ankle after those operations, it's not fixed itself properly, um, and she's in a lot of pain. And she said, I could sit in a, in a chair and, and compete that way, but it's not what I'm used to. You know, I'd like to shoot as much as I could before my accident, you know, in the same kind of way. So she does, um, and you'll see in standing, she, she'll stand on one foot, tiptoes on the other. So she's just trying to replicate as much as she can what she's used to. A lot of these athletes, they've started their shooting career uh, in a chair or a, or a shooting chair, and so it's not so much of a problem. So it's a, it's a fascinating sort of uh, to, to watch these athletes and what works for them and what doesn't. And as you can see, the clock ticking down. We're ready to go. Prone is our next set of three series of shots. Chief Range Officer just checking his stopwatch, making sure he's ready. So still, isn't it, as the concentration, you can feel it coming from the athletes. And the clock, of course, less time on it, two minutes and 30 seconds, because you are more stable, you should be able to get these Shots away a little easier. Well, it is a matter of pacing yourself to a certain extent. You don't want to rush anything, but you also don't want to leave it to have the pressure of the clock at the end of those two and a half minutes and yeah. have to, to speed things up, and that could end rather disastrously too. So you want to find that rhythm of those five yeah. shots. Very rarely do we use all of those seconds normally done by then, some quicker than others. But keep an eye on how these athletes are doing because we are expecting this to be the highest scoring. Well, we can already see very accurate shots. Hill shot with 10.3 on that last shot, 10.7. Look how close that group is. 10.9 from the Thai athlete. Can't get better than that. So she starts really well. 9.6 from Norman, though. That's not a great start from her. But back into the 10 ring with a 10.4. She has struggled, hasn't she? So far in this competition, I wonder whether things may change in the standing, but when it gets to that position, it may be too late to rescue yourself. So she'll be anxious to keep shooting well, and that's much better. A 10-6, good grouping as well. Not only she had that problem with her ankle, she <laughs> broke her foot last year as well, so she's not having a lot of luck. Made it to the final of the air rifle standing as well, the Swedish athlete. Lee at the bottom, just uh, underneath the Swedish athlete in the rankings. Not bad, though. That 1-9 will disappoint her, but the rest of those shots looking pretty good. Badafakova in the 10 ring. And into third place as a result. Look at the stillness, look at the breathing, or the lack of it. And 10-4, uh, nice way to finish off. Such a tight group, just slightly to the right. But she doesn't seem to be making any adjustments. One of the shots was to the left as well, so she'll be hoping the next series averages themselves out and it's right in the centre of that target. You can see the monitors they're looking at right by them at their eye level, and uh, that will tell them exactly where they are hitting. And then a little bit further on in the field of play, you will see what uh, the, that monitor you can see on that shot there, which gives where they are and the difference in uh, points between them. So they know exactly what's going on, and so do we. This is the situation. Lee yun ri in all sorts of bother. Not a bad series for her in the uh, prone, the first series, but she is so far adrift of Norman, who is there or thereabouts with everybody else. But uh, Zhang Kuiping, the woman who is looking to retain her title, won the gold in London, gold in Rio, and at the moment you wouldn't bet against a third one here. She does look in control, doesn't she? Not giving anything to her opponents. That 10 will have disappointed uh, Hilltrop because you are looking for high 10s here. If you can get high 10s here, you will be in a good place. 
You will be punished if you don't. That's very solid from Vadovakova. The highest 52.4 on that last series was from Zhang, and she continues to eke out a lead. Over a point now. First place on the right. Hiltrop in second. Nice start from Hiltrop. That's what she wants to do, just nip away oh, look a at couple that. of percentage points every time. And she's in excellent form. She doesn't hang around, does she? Whereas Zhang, a little bit more considered. There's the third one. That's a little way to the left. 10-9 from Zhang. Well, she's come back. Well, there we go. So. The, the most perfect shot we'll ever see. The highest score that you can be awarded. 10.9. Near to perfect. Well, here's Lee seeing what she can do to claw back that deficit. She won the bronze medal five years ago in Rio and finished just outside the podium in London. But all the way back in Beijing, that was when she was first crowned Paralympic champion. But right now, she's not looking like she's going to be able to better any of those results. Yeah, started off for her para sport journey with table tennis for a long time. She said, I felt I wasn't really good enough at the top level. So a friend said, why don't you try shooting? I hope she buys a nice Christmas present for that friend every year. Well, here's just a, the scoreline of the seventh and eighth placed athletes as we get towards the knockout stage. And consider the grouping of the top two athletes we saw with the grouping of these athletes. Not bad for Norman, but Lee, you can't say that she's in good form there and uh, she is still a long way behind as we get towards the denouement of this competition this is how it looks look at that gap between Zhang and Hiltrop it has widened Hiltrop initially nipping a little bit back 0.2 extra for Zhang and at the bottom Li is a long way behind Anna Norman but remember two athletes leave in the first elimination. Well, it's currently looking very close between fifth and seventh. Still another series, so that could change. But those will be the athletes that start to watch the rest of the standings. Those at the top will probably find it easier to stay focused on their own situation for the moment as the pressure doesn't really come until you get close to the rest of the field chasing you. Adakova with a 9.9. .9. She is in third place, which is a, a, a bit of a way behind Hilltrop, but a 9.9 .9 won't help. But you saw Hilltrop with another finishing shot of 10. So she needs to finish well, as, want to start well. And well, this is an athlete who is peerless at the moment. Everyone else on her coattails, I think it's fair to say. Ooh, well, she, <laughs> she is human. That's a poor shot from a, a prone part of this competition. Hiltrop with a 10-3 after a really strong first shot. 10-8 to start with, then a 10-3. She could look to try to take advantage of that 10.1 by Zhang, but maybe not quite maximizing that opportunity. Lee. Well, that's better, a better start, better grouping. And she's grouping, but she's not grouping in the centre 10, as they call it. Along on shooting position H. Again, good grouping, but needs to be a little bit to the left. She'll know that, doesn't need me to tell her. She will look to readjust, but the, the big thing is don't overcompensate. Well, that is the challenge. Exactly what she's done. Yeah, it's it's a tricky one of whether you do decide to alter the sights or you just stick with what you're doing and hopefully correct naturally whatever it was that wasn't quite working. But Avakova with that lovely group at the top, making up for that nine she had in the previous round. 
It's still not where she wants to be. It's groups, but the grouping is, is <laughs> it's not where you want it to be. Certainly, you expect high. You know, you want 10.5s, 10.6s, if you possibly can, in the prone position, because they've got all that stability. And, you know, in, in this, you know, sort of, I guess, classic prone position for Norman, not much issue when it comes to st stability. You will have in standing, you will be swaying all over the place, and you'll see with the those old wheelchairs and shooting chairs that will take away all that support to... Uh, obviously, they won't be standing, but it will be the same effect, a less right. amount of, uh, of stability. And that's uh, how it looks, and uh, it's clear at the top and uh, clear water at the bottom as well. Well, we'll see that standing shortly as the athletes start to prepare for the final phase. And it's Lee Yunri who's really going to have to pull out something special. But look at the top of the standings. We've got a change in a leader, Natasha Hiltrop, leaping ahead of Zhang Qiuping. So an incredible final strong set of five shots for the German. Well, it was very strong. I mean, she's been really consistent. 52-1, 52-1, 52-2. And Zhang had been 52-4, 52-3. So, you know, besting the German. And then a 49-7. And that, I mean, three points is it, massive. Or two and a half is massive in this sport. Uh, we've seen in other... This is why we love the sport so much. It can change. There we go. Look at that. A 9-2 and a 9-9. Well, we saw the 9-2, didn't we? We were speculating as to whether Hilltrop could take advantage of that and got the close of Hilltrop's shots. And there was nothing outstanding from Hilltrop, just consistent. Of course, now completely different setup for all these athletes, whether like Norman you are standing or whether you're on a, a shooting chair or a wheelchair. Watch the, the trousers go on. Now, these give you stability. If you are standing, a natural way we stand, if you were to video yourself and then fast forward it, you'd see yourself rocking to and fro. And that's not really your friend if you're trying to be accurate uh, 50 metres away. And look at how uh, everything changes on that rifle as well. Because, of course, if you are standing, then, of course, your head is a lot higher in the position you were last in, so the sights have to change. Again, Are stock right? changes as well. And of course, you've got to make all these adjustments. There's your shooting stand as well, where you can rest the rifle in between shots. It's all a lot of moving parts, and in Paralympics, you do have someone who can help you with that. But as a team, you've got to make sure every single thing is ticked off. Well, your rifle's obviously at a different angle to the target as well, so you've got that to consider. And with that, the light is different, and such small differences in the environment can affect the way you see the sights and line them up. So this is where this sighting time really comes to play. So you want to make sure you've had a quick transition so you've got maximum time to make any final adjustments. Interesting, you see there the Thai athlete busy, busy, busy getting around, repositioning, and then the deep breaths, trying to just control the shooting again. That's why you don't want to leave it too late. You want to make sure that you are in a good place. As you can see, the, the athletes who are in chairs, the uh, elbow stands, the shooting tables, they've all gone. So they do now have to make sure they're as stable as possible in their upper body. Athletes like uh, Shetnik and Norman are in the standing position. And they will have the trousers on as well. The shoes, they are have very, very stiff soles as well. And they are tested before the special machine to make sure there's not too much flex, not too little flex. I think it's fair to say you wouldn't be able to dance very well in this well, attire. No, and in, in the Olympics when the athletes walk on, they kind of shuffle on like robots. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little unusual. So there we go. You can see uh, Chetnik Norman on those stalls, but with the trousers on as well. The uh, athletes in chairs with the, and uh, the shooting chairs with no support 
for that uh, stance that they have. And uh, just a reminder, we'll have a couple of series of five shots, and after that first, uh, the second series, we lose a couple of athletes. So, and then after that, you know, every shot we lose somebody, and it starts to go from, I mean, I liken it to a marathon, and then it becomes like, uh, you know, the, the fact the last bend on an 800 meters, everyone starts jostling for position, and it, it just gets a bit brutal. I think you could sort of liken it to a cycling road race when you have the peloton and there's a few small changes and then as you get towards the finish and it's in sight you start to see the moves happening and athletes not able to stick with that fast and furious pace. I'll go with that, I like that. If I've got quite a bit of uh, shooting, sighting time to go. More time between this transition than the first transition because there are more things, there are more moving parts to work out. As you can see, the, the sights are higher. The uh, stock against the shoulder is in a different position. Everything changes. And you've got to get that right. And it does take more time. And of course, you know, wardrobe changes. So the jacket goes on. That takes time as well. Yeah, it will be thoroughly practiced and each of these athletes will have their own routine. So it won't be something that they'll need to even think about. It'll just be habit as soon as yeah. The time starts, they all know as their coach and helper comes along and the two of them will just know exactly what they need to do in what order and the thinking can be kept for the sighting series and the focus between the sights and the target. I'll be interested to see how this changes. Shetnik of Ukraine is up into fourth. Norman, who was down in the drop zone is now up to fifth and it will be interesting to see if if this is their thing the standing is their thing don't be surprised if you see them all of a sudden knocking on the door of the medals Zhang maybe that she drops down now I mean, remember though she is the defending champion so don't write her off well just this yet. woman here Avani Lakara has the gold medal from the 10 meter standing competition. So you'd like to think that yep. she had just a slightly poor finish that last series, but she might well look to move quite dramatically back up through. Well, I mean, Zhang, of course, with the silver and the air rifle standing. And then you look at Shetnik with two bronzes in uh, the air rifle prone standing. So we'll see how this plays out. I'm surprised that Lee is so far behind, if truth be told so well versed and has been in the middle so often in the three position competition we'll see if she can come through well we are going to see changes that's one thing that is pretty certain we've seen quite a lot of changes in the midfield over the last couple of series we expect to see more drama as we move on to this final position of the three position rifle. Norman using a stand for assistance to help with that ankle and we spoke about earlier. So she's had to slightly adapt her standing position, but still very much opting for standing. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, she's in that classic slightly arched back uh, position that you see, but she has uh, support there for sure wouldn't be uh, viable otherwise we're getting close to the denouement of this competition this is how it stands at the moment Hiltrop well has been behind Zhang all the time until the last series and uh, a couple of really poor shots from Zhang and all of a sudden almost a point behind he is comfortably ahead of third place at the moment two points ahead of Badovikova who is fairly comfortably ahead of Shetnik but two series on for five and then it may all be very very different indeed remember our first eliminations are at 40 targets well that's the preparation time completed the next shot on the target will count towards the final score yep, you see the targets above them all being wiped clean so everyone in the stands can see what is going on. We'll do our best to keep you appraised of the situation. 
Getting to the serious end of this competition. 35 minutes of it already gone. A woman in the lead, Natasha Hiltrop. This might not be her strongest of the three positions. She didn't manage to make it into the final in the standing event, finished 11th after the qualifications. But she does already have a gold medal to her name from the prone event. Well, we're underway in the standing part of this competition. And that's what you're going to see. You're going to see a lot of variation. You want to, if you can get into the 10 ring, that is going to be marvellous for you. And you will progress. Let's have a look at Jang, see what she can do. Oh, agonizing delay to see what her score is. She has, I think, hit one already, but we will have to wait and see. Keeping us in suspense here. And Jang, we could expect to see move back up. The silver medal in the pure standing event at just 10 meter distance. That's the first shot we've been shown, a 10.0. And like you said, 10 is good in this position when you don't have that added support. An 8-3 from Vada Vikova. That will hurt her. Jang is having a decent series. That is uh, not so good for Vada Vikova. You can see the frustration in her posture there, I think it's fair to say. Vada Vakova sitting in fourth position just outside the medals. Shetnik up into third. And this is the tie athlete oh, all the way into the eights and all the way to the left. And all of a sudden, she's down in seventh place. The Indian she's... athlete, Lakara, down into sixth. She is struggling, isn't she, in the standing? And this is what you'll see things will change around. Norman up into fourth, Vadakovicova uh, down into fifth, and all of a sudden, everything looks very different. Well, we did expect to see some changes, but they are more dramatic than maybe even we expected here. Zhang keeping it nibbling in the 10 or near the 10. What can she do to finish off in this first series in standing? That'll do it very nicely indeed. And so we wondered whether she was going to have a wobble, but she's right back on it. A lot of athletes have already finished. Some will take their time. Well, Lekahara, we know, is incredibly strong in the standing event. Can she move right the way up through and onto the podium? Well, it's uh, business resumed as normal for Zhang back on the top. Not that far ahead, though, of Natasha Hiltrop. Shetnik, well, she was at the bottom for a bit, but she's uh, heading up into the medal positions, but only 0.6 ahead of Vada, Vada Vikova. Anna Norman had a, a good couple of shots and then dropped back down again. So, five more shots, and we will see who ends up being the first two athletes to leave. Zhang, top of the pile. I don't think she'll be worried about dropping out after these next five shots, but we will have two athletes leaving. 8.7 from Hilltrop. That's why she dropped down from first to second, but there may be other wild shots to come. Pressure on these athletes. He's starting well with the 10 3. Zhang, all eyes on her. 
Takes the time, the 10-6. That is outstanding in this standing position. That lack of uh, support, anything in the high 10s is really excellent. 10-6 from Hilltop to start off with. Shetnik with a 9-8. Fanovikova, 10-2. So these athletes ought to play for. And Norman is struggling here. She's not in the bottom two just yet. In fact, she's up into fifth. Fanovikova can't buy a target. She is down into sixth place. I think she'll be all right for this first elimination. But after that, uh, who knows? Well, that's the thing is you start being put yourself under pressure for the first set of eliminations and it's hard to get out of that pressured situation as you're constantly chasing, just running away from the next one to go. Well, Leung Villai of Thailand is the one trying to get ahead of seventh place. At the moment, it's not working out for a Norman. The reason we don't see her anymore is because she has leapfrogged that of a cover, and she is the one in danger. But uh, at the moment, Lee and Young Villai are the two who are looking like they might end up leaving. And if it is the case, there's some decent shooting going on from Lee. I think that group there is better than what she had in the kneeling to start the competition off. You think less stability, but maybe she's just managed to find her form. It could be too late, though, for well, the Korean. Yeah, Long Villai is, uh, well, she's down into eighth place. Lee has leapfrogged her by 0.1 at the moment with a 51.8 over those five shots. Long Villai, a 47.7 to follow up a 45. It's not been, as we say, for some, you get to standing, you're going to thrive. For others, you're going to struggle. 57 in that first series for Zhang just proves, you know, what an athlete she is. 57.7 for Hilltrop uh, has kept her in top place. She's just leapfrogged Zhang with a 49.3. But at the bottom, it is the Thai athlete who is the first athlete who will have to make way. 45 and a 47-7 is not what she would have wanted in the standing positions. And as for Lee, well, that was an excellent last one. But she ends up in seventh place. So eighth place then for the Thai athlete. The 30-year-old from Pat Kret will have to take her place by her coach and watch the rest of the proceedings. And also Lee Yun-ri, the gold medalist in this competition in Beijing, a bronze in Rio, but not a place on the podium for her. It is seventh place for her. And, well, that's what this competition is all about. You're in it for, what, 45 minutes, then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you're not. Six left. And there will be someone leaving after this next shot. Individual shots now, Vadovakova, from a podium position is now 0.3 away from safety. Norman has not been in the top half so far in this competition, so she's in danger as well. And then it's a fascinating battle for gold and silver, isn't it? And then between Chetnik and Lakara uh, to see who will be on the podium. Well, Lakara's been working her way up through the field in this last stage, we could see her start to put the pressure on Shetnik. That 9-6, uh, but for that, she might have been quite a long way ahead of Zhang Kuiping. Well, it's almost as though there's two battles going on at the moment at the top, the one for the gold and the one for the bronze. Oh, a 9-9 from Vada Fikona is not what she would have wanted, and that may be it. Norman with a 10, that'll keep her Interested in this competition. Vadovikova, who was looking so good early on. Well, the standing part of this competition has not been the best for Vadovikova. Sixth in the prone, fourth in, in the air rifle, and fourth in the air rifle standing. And, uh, well, it is another sixth-place finish for her. 
She has three Paralympic gold medals, of course, two at Rio, but uh, she is not going to be on the podium here. Well, consistently making it into the finals. She might have a little bit of reflection after this competition. Work out how to turn that consistency into medals again. So sixth place for Veronica Vodafakova from Trnava. Made a debut 25 years ago internationally. Partner Milan, I'm sure, very proud of what she has achieved. Well, Hilltrop, when we were focusing on the bottom there, has just extended her lead to 1.0 ahead of Zhang. Well, Zhang with a 9-6, Hilltrop with a 10-4, and all of a sudden the dynamic changes, doesn't it? A 10 from Norman, a 10-2 in the last lot from Shetnik. So it will take something quite remarkable for Norman not to take fifth place here. Well, we've got Lakara on our screen, but she was actually on an equal score with Shetnik coming into this next shot. Well, it is Norman who has uh, not been able to overhaul that really rather large. It was a 10-6 to finish. But Shetnik with a 10-4 actually leapfrogging into third place. But Norman off Sweden, the 37-year-old who had that uh, qualifying world record, of course, was in good form. But in this first Paralympic Games, unable to get on the podium, and she finishes in fifth place. Well, we've had a change at the top yet again. Zhang and Hilltrop really are battling it out. And the leaders changed for the last three shots. Well, the problem is they're, they're, they're trading poor shots. So a 9-6 last series from Zhang, then a 9-1 from Hilltrop compared to a 9-6. So that's a big swing. It really does remain incredibly open at the top. And now the battle is going to be between Shetnik and Lakara. And it's a close one. It's point two between these two. So it could go either way. Shetnik with two bronzes to her name, looking for a third one here. Oh, and it's a good target from Lakara. Shetnik will be under pressure here. She won't know this because she'll be concentrating on her shot. What is it? It's a 9 9. Oh dear. Oh dear. Well, what a shame for Irina Shetnik, but the 21-year-old who has impressed so much in her first Paralympic Games, a bronze in the 10-metre air rifle prone and a 10-metre uh, standing competition. Two bronzes, almost a third, but she falters at the last and has to settle for fourth place. Well, such an impressive athlete and so consistent just off the podium. I'm sure she will still have come in and exceeded her expectations. And we had a close-up there of Avani Lakara after that shot by Shetnik. And you saw her physically release some of the pressure. She let out a big breath and she knew she's guaranteed a medal. Hilltrop is a top of these standings. Once again, a 10-3 from her, a 9-4 from Zhang, whilst we were watching the battle for bronze. And it was a battle for bronze, you'd have thought, because uh, Lakara is quite a way behind. However, never say never. Let's see how this plays out. Just three targets lit up here at the shooting range. Zhang and Lakara. Hilltrop. All in the mix here. Nakara with a 10-2, you suspect won't be enough, but we've had a couple of uh, poor shots in this standing section. Still we wait from Zhang, that's nicely done. It is Lekhara who will have to make way. The Indian gold in the 10-meter air rifle standing competition and a second uh, medal for this 19-year-old from Jaipur. And no wonder she's smiling. She said COVID affected not only her training, where she can't actually get to the range, but also her physio to sort her legs out, keep them massaged. So it's been a tough few months for her.
but she did say her philosophy is life consists not in holding the cards, but playing those cards that you hold. And I quite like that. And, uh, well, forget the cards. Think about medals. She has two now at these Paralympic Games. It's a bronze for Avani Lekara. Well, now, just one shot remaining to decide the Paralympic champion. And we have Zhang on the right-hand side of your screen, who is the defending champion in this event. Hiltrop on the left, who has already won a gold at these Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. And it's interesting, Hiltrop with the 10-7, whilst well, we saw Zhang with that 10-3, so she extended her lead. But if they were to swap, you know, you know nine for Hiltrop and tip the Zhang in the 10s, it could happen. And it's an 8-7 from Hiltrop. Oh, my. So it's all down to Zhang here. Keep an eye on the cumulative scores. Zhang likes to take her time, and she has done it. Oh, you've got to feel for Hiltrop, because that was a terrible last shot. Uh, it, it happens, and she will know that it's just part of the game. Sometimes you're on form, and sometimes you're not. And these two have swapped all the way through this competition. But on the last shot, it's Zhang who takes gold. Well done to Zhang Ku Ping of China. And well, commiserations to Natasha Hilldrop because she was outstanding and hauled away into gold medal contention. And then just that eight ring shot at the end undid all the good work. And she will have to settle for silver after that gold, of course, in the 10-metre air rifle prone competition. Well, here's the Paralympic champion, three times Paralympic champion in this event, Zhang Kuping, unbeatable for the last three Paralympic Games. He'll drop, that would be a real disappointment that last shot, but she's smiling because she knows as well that it is a competition over just under an hour and it doesn't always just... It's about all the shots, isn't it, as well? Congratulations to Avani Lekara, the youngster, the teenager, with a second medal of the Games, not gold this time. This time it's bronze. The law student will be happy with that, I am sure. And well done to Natasha Hiltrop, the 29-year-old. Gold in the air rifle prone competition. Silver here in that dramatic denouement on the last shot. And Zhang, well, she takes the gold after keeping her calm, carrying on, and uh, under pressure, showing what a class act she is. The last three Paralympic Games, she has been the gold medalist. What an athlete she is. One more to celebrate for the team of China, adding more gold medals from this Osaka shooting range to their impressive tally. Team members, the old dignitary, some coaches there, not the crowd we would have hoped for, but a good atmosphere all the sa same. Paralympic record for Zhang Kuping, as well as the gold. The silver to Natasha Hilltrop and a bronze for Avani Lekara of India.
victory ceremony for the women's three position 50 meter rifle competition and what an exciting one it was as well with drama right to the last shot and three medalists making their way to the podium shooting range marvelous facility that has been provided for our competition here Kim Sung Il out of the IPC he'll be presenting the medals and next to him presenting the gifts the flowers Hiroshi Sato out of the uh, organizing committee. We thank them for their efforts. Kara of India with the bronze medal, just 19 years of age, a, a gold in the 10 meter air rifle standing as well. The teenager from Jaipur looked like she might be in trouble in the early part of the competition, but goodness me, did she come back strong. Only started shooting six years ago in her debut internationally in 2017. Bronze then for India and Avani Lakara. Natasha Hilltop, the German athlete who was so close to the top step of the podium ahead until the last shot, the last uh, exchange with Zhang. Goodness me, they were exchanging the lead all the way to the end and then shot in the eight ring and gold became silver. But of course, she has the gold in the 10 meter air rifle prone competition. She has been outstanding. And he is. Silver for Germany and Natasha Hiltrop. China, gold in this in London, a gold in this three position event in Rio, and now a gold here in Tokyo. Outstanding athlete, a silver here in the air rifle standing competition. She already came to this Tokyo 2020 event with three silvers and two bronzes from the Paralympic Games. So she has a big cabinet of medals. And here's another one, gold for China and Zhang Chui-Pin. Well, for the third time in a row at Paralympic Games in the three-position 50-metre 
rifle competition, the Chinese national anthem rings out, and that is because Zhang, now a three-time gold medalist in this event at London, at Rio, and now here. Confirmation of how it finished, India's Avani Lakara with the bronze, Natasha Hiltrop of Germany with the silver, and once again, that woman, Zhang Liping of China, another gold for her. Such a big moment for the athletes. A moment they want to save her for as long as possible. That moment on the podium. <laughs> Jane, I wonder if she can make it four in a row in three years' time. Still only 33 years of age, the woman from Handan. The young uh, podium, really. 29-year-old Hilltrop with the silver. And Lakara, who are just 19. Surely she is the future of this competition, there she is.